Oh, thank God. Holy crap. Oh my gosh, that was the long... Oh, and we ranked up. <sighs> that was such a long game. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on guys and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Before we jump into today's deck, I just want to remind you if you are not already, please feel free to subscribe. It really does mean a lot. It's great to have you all as part of our amazing community. Uh, it's really been fun to see the new influx of people in here and everybody watching. So thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Let's jump into today's deck. We have got an Orzov Clerics deck here. Uh, you'll notice this is version 2. This is just because I had a previous standard version still in my, uh, my, my queue here. But we've got a lot of interesting cards that we got to add to this list. Now, I say a lot. We've got a handful of cards we got to add to this list. Lunark Veteran being one of the best. Uh, a 1 mana 1-1. One, one. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life, and then you have a Disturb cost of 2, which allows you to play it back out of the graveyard. Uh, sorry, my dog is just, like, chilling under here. Uh, anyway, uh, that basically does the reverse. So anytime a creature would leave the battlefield, you gain a life then instead. That's going to keep the life gain train going as, as easily as we can. Uh, we do have a number of other life gain opportunities here. Impassioned Orator is here. Uh, Cleric of Life Splood is here as well. So all of these are going to be able to gain us some life in the early game. And then, of course, Righteous Valkyrie being one of the all-time greatest three-drop uh, clerics, in my opinion, uh, is here as well. And hopefully we can get to that 27 life total pretty quickly. Uh, and if we can do that, we're actually going to be in really, really good shape to just, you know, pound away at the opponent and hopefully win. Uh, clear it class is going to help us out, gaining a little bit of extra life, hopefully throwing some counters around as well. Uh, we might be able to empty our hand here fairly quickly, so clear it class could help us out there and uh, just giving us a mana sink as well. One of the other new cards that we're able to play with here is Fateful Absence. I have the full four in here. Uh, it deals with a creature or planeswalker. Yes, the opponent does get to investigate. However, uh, very often, I don't think that that is going to make or break. I think uh, being able to deal with, obviously, Infernal Grasp was kind of the other option here uh, that deals with any creature and then also you take two damage. I think that's a better spell in terms of not giving your opponent uh, a lot of uh, outs. However, the fact that this deals with planeswalkers i found very important uh and maybe that's not correct maybe that's me misevaluating i don't know uh but creatures definitely are the main focus however to be able to deal with a planeswalker i feel like is going to be very relevant in certain matchups so i'm very happy to have that there hallowed priest obviously here just going to be stacking up counters on it every time we gain some life that's going to get a little bit stronger acting very heavily like an ajani's pride mate uh, Elite Spellbinder is in here. Little bit of disruption for the hand. Uh, while it's not perfect, it does uh, maybe stave off a sweeper or something along those lines to hopefully uh, keep us in the game a little longer. We do have Aura Skyclave Hi Hierophant. Uh, uh, this is absolutely fantastic card. Basically adds in a little bit of protection. Anytime something is going to die, we're able to get something with lesser mana value back. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that Lunark Veteran, if we disturb it back out, it's not going to be in our graveyard. We can't use it, but uh, very, very good still regardless. Uh, I also have a two of Angel of Destiny here. This basically gives uh, every creature uh, lifelink, uh, which seems really good. But at the same time, it also adds a secondary win con. And sometimes that's very, very helpful, depending on the deck we're against. Uh, now, it may not be super relevant all the time, but it is a very, very powerful card. So I figured, yeah, let's throw it in there. Let's see what we can do. We do only have 20 lands, uh, and I've got a one of Cave of the Frost Dragon in here. Don't want too many tapped lands. Uh, you'll notice we've only got two Snarls. We do have the four pathway lands, but most of it is just basic lands. We really don't want to miss our curve with this deck. That is the goal number one, uh, is make sure we hit on curve as best we can. Now, obviously, we're going to see some games where that doesn't happen, and that's fine, but 
that's really the goal so hopefully we can have some fun with this one guys let's jump into game one let's see what we can do all right guys here we are for game number one and uh yeah this is a pretty easy keep in my opinion we've got basically both colors of mana some good early drops uh the fateful absence for just a little bit of interaction as we see we need it uh i am gonna lead on the veteran here and we'll see if we actually uh, it looks like we won't need that fateful absence most likely but we'll see uh looks like they're gonna get a white source here so Let's go ahead. Let's throw this out for black here. I am going to just progress our board. I don't particularly want to uh, just kind of leave up the fateful absence when we probably won't need it for a turn two play. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But uh, search your library for a planes card. Put it into your hand. Sure. That is fine. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead. Let's throw this out here. We do really want to get one more land at some point. Uh, that's kind of our focus. But again, if we can get that land, not only do we have Aura here, which is going to be a great play, but it also gives us that Cleric class level up here. Okay. Uh, we can Fateful Absence that and uh, get the get the token back. Uh, the question is, do we want to trade off here? I'm actually okay with trading off. Uh, ours is much better in that regard, so that's kind of fine. I'm going to play out another Veteran, and then I'm going to... Uh, we'll pass. I suppose um, what we can do is in response to anything they do just decide to play that fateful absence but I kind of want to make them spend some mana here first um, and if they do that then hopefully we're in much better shape all right uh, I don't hate our position here um, we're we're gonna be able to kill this brutal Cathar okay I'm gonna let that happen first they're gonna get a planes into their hand which is fine uh, but let's see if they have any follow-up plays. If they just move to attacks... Okay, they're going to foretell a card. Perfect. That's our opportunity to just get to kill this. We get our creature back and gain a little bit of life in the process, which is fantastic. All right. Uh, here we actually get to do a good bit as well. So we're going to gain some life there. And then we're going to gain some life here. <laughs> Uh, and now anytime anything leaves the battlefield, we're also going to be able to gain a good bit of life. So this is a, a pretty easy, pretty easy swing there. I mean, 36 life is pretty good. If we can get two more uh, mana, we're actually just in, in win territory. And again, this isn't great for us, obviously, but we still have the two Lunark veterans that we're going to be able to play back out here. Uh, and we're up to 42 life. So like, yeah, it's not ideal, obviously, to get swept, but... Not the end of the world, really, either. Um, okay, uh, so we have some options here, truthfully. Um, I'm going to play the Aura. aura? I'm going to play this guy uh, first, and we're going to see what happens. Um, the trick here is if they remove this, we just get the Righteous Valkyrie back, which is, like, kind of perfect. Um, okay, so they're going to hit this. That's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Uh, sure. At the beginning of your end step. Uh, so do we just play this and win? It has to have attacked this turn. Okay. I thought so, but I wasn't positive. Um, each player, Angel of Destiny, attacked. Got it. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, because this is going to be, again, I think slightly difficult for them to deal with. They do have to either have another Brutal Cathar or just be able to take it out here. Uh, let's get rid of this. Perfect. Um, we take two. I mean, that's fine. And there's the Fertel. Sure. Uh, but this is going to get... Uh, uh, yeah, we'll just get Righteous Valkyrie back. Um, and we'll get one of these guys back. And now again, we are set up fairly well against Sweeper decks because we don't really have to worry as much about them. Um, now, I'm not saying we don't have to worry about them, but we definitely have a little bit more play than a normal deck would. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this out here. This is going to be able to, again, really push through some damage, but in addition, we'll be able to uh, pump some stuff up here and get in for a bigger attack, which we do want to finish this game as quickly as we can here, knowing that they're, they're potentially going to be sweeping once again. Uh, we just want to make sure we're doing the best we can. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, return target card. So 
we're actually just going to be able to to bring some stuff back here uh let's throw the counter here um and again this clear it class between this between aura uh aura whatever uh between all of the stuff that we have it's going to be very difficult i think to not be able to have a play um there's the elite spellbinder as well not bad but i am actually going to go this route first uh let's get you back uh and let's put some counters uh let's keep them on the flyer here again this is going to punch through most of the damage so let's go ahead and and punch through as much as we can uh we gain some life in this process anyway and there we go uh feeling pretty good i mean we're at 64 life they're at 11 now they can sweep again um or they're gonna kill it that's fine <laughs> but we still have a 4-4 uh that's turning into a much bigger threat i'm gonna keep the counters here actually so this allows us to block these little two twos and two ones and things like that if we need to um okay that i don't really care about very often um to be honest they're gonna blow up the cave uh so what we're gonna do is tap it for a white might be able to investigate here i believe uh let's get another click click the white source there we go okay uh so what this allows us to do is then crack that clue token which is perfect so let's go ahead and do that let's draw our card they are down to one card in hand. They're facing down a 4-4 flyer and a 3-3 on the ground. Uh, and they do have this little guy, but truthfully, yeah, I think actually it's okay to go ahead and kill this. The reason being, we're not going to get anything off of the Lunark Aspirant in terms of off of this, because there's nothing with less value than that. Um, but additionally, uh, it just kind of slows things down for them. Uh, so let's do Cleric of Life's Blood. That's our life gainer. Let's also get out the uh, Skyclave Hierophant here. That's going to power through more damage, uh, which is great. Uh, and then, again, if they sweep, they sweep. But we've got, a, we've got a flyer here. Plus, we just get free stuff off of this. So, like, I'm, I'm feeling pretty safe at the moment. I'll be honest. Uh, at 70 life, I feel like that's an okay thing to do. Now, this is very good. They're going to pump up the squad here. Uh, looks like three times yeah hey very very good don't get me wrong don't think it's gonna be enough though uh because we can gain life twice this turn let's spell binder here uh that's gonna put a counter here perfect get that out of the the hand not that they were really gonna worry about that but there we go we got the good game guys i think we did it heck yes there it is amazing that was game one guys that was about as smooth as we could hope for let's go ahead let's jump into game two all right guys here we are for game number two now this is a bit of an interesting keep uh but i think we are gonna try it we've got the cleric and the priest so even if we don't draw lands we're in okay shape but ideally we are gonna be able to draw some lands here that is not what you want to see uh this is a very very frustrating card obviously to deal with here oh wow two of them is even worse uh, so let's see what we can do here guys. I don't love this uh, Anytime you see a mill deck we're in Not a great position, but we're gonna do the best we can. Let's go ahead. Let's cleric of life's blood Fully expecting them to have some bounce some things to slow us down here uh, Wow, okay blue green interesting so we can play that veteran out of the graveyard That is a nice little trick with this is that we can uh, kind of pump some stuff up here, but all right, let's get land. Let's get Valkyrie down. Maybe it would have been better for Spellbinder. Ah, that's okay. Uh, let's attack in for three here. We're just going to be as aggressive as we can. Push out as much as as much damage output as we possibly can against this list and hopefully race them. But the against two Ruin Crabs, it's a little tricky. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we do have the double Righteous Valkyrie here. So theoretically, we might be able to... Uh, wow! Oh, that's so clever. Okay, Croaking Counterpart is a very cool little card for this list. I, I like that quite a bit. Um, all right, let's get this down. Get another Righteous Valkyrie down. I think that's the best thing we can do here. Gonna gain some life, uh, and we're gonna attack in. They're just gonna take it. Uh, yeah, this is about as straightforward, I feel like, a game that you can expect. If they get 
another land they can croaking counterpart once again uh get another ruin crab and then theoretically we could just die here uh this is a a very interesting little list here so they're milling nine for every land uh which is kind of insane i mean look at look at that um yeah dude like you got it i can't be i can't be mad at the fact that they just have it like that's just really good um all right uh let's priest first i suppose uh this is gonna gain us all the life we want which is fantastic uh then let's spellbinder all right we did it uh we had it in the air so that actually worked out really really well um wow we had exactly enough they should have blocked earlier dude that's all i'm saying all right <laughs> let's move on to game three all right guys here we are for game number three and unfortunately i don't think we can keep this if we had a black source i'd be more apt to it but uh it doesn't look like that's going to be the case this isn't amazing, but it is a keep. Uh, we're going to throw one of these back, obviously. Get that cleric class down, and then we can uh, Hollowed Priest the following turn. We really do need some other action here, though. I just don't want to mulligan down too low in a deck where we're we're basically just playing out threats and hoping for the best. Um, Righteous Valkyrie, great draw if we can get another land off the top here. That would be ideal. Uh, a land off the top would allow us to play this out. That's going to uh, not gain us life, I guess, right away, but it should be able to, to push us in the right direction. All right, Death Touch Rat. That's a little annoying. Um, we're going to play the Orator. And pass. Uh, don't know what this deck is going to be. I'm very... I mean, it could just be Golgari, mid-range, Death Touch, Sadness. <laughs> uh, the Death Touch deck is an annoying deck. There is no doubt about it. Ah, we're a zombie deck, are we? Uh, slash rat deck? I don't know. That's weird. All right, we're going to throw some counters around. Uh, kind of nice. Um, we're not going to attack, though. We're just going to let things be. Really need a land off the top. Land off the top would be amazing. Okay, not that land. That was really silly. <laughs> Yes, you got it. That's fair. Um, all right. This is a weird, like, battle here because it's basically just the same thing on the reverse side. Um, we're life gain. They're just death touch, like, kill stuff. Uh, we're not going to attack. We're going to hold off. We do need to start attacking in here, but they do have the death touchers, so... Uh, there's kind of a back and forth there. Uh, thankfully, we have another Righteous Valkyrie, so not the end of the world um does this have death touch it does but i'm okay with killing that uh i'd rather kill that than a rat so i'm gonna definitely go for that all right let's play the righteous valkyrie um i am gonna attack with both in here this may not be correct but at this point, like, I just kind of want to get some stuff off the field. We can't hold off forever. Uh, we do have the aura. I guess we could. We should have waited. Ah, that was a mistake. We should have waited until we had the Skyclave down. I think that would have been a lot better. Um, wow, they just have so many bindings. Uh, sure. Oh, they took out the Cleric class. Now that's interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. I don't know that I 100% agree with that, but that's fine. Let's get this down. Uh, and let's attack in here. Do want to keep on the uh, damage train as best we can. Um, but now, if something dies, we can bring some stuff back. So that's fine by me. Depending on what they do here, we might want to... Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. We're going to gain a little life off of that. Um, yeah, I think we're going to try and take out the uh, the Spider Queen here. Now, they're obviously just going to, I assume, block. Sure. But we gain some life in that process. Uh, let's see. So they can sack it and just create two more of those two ones, or they can draw a card. Um, 
There's the Renin 7. That, that, that is a scary card. I do not like that. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, they've got a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, now, crucially, this does have reach. Something to keep in mind, for sure. Uh, and so we do have to play around that a little here. There's an Elite Spellbinder. I think we do just go for it there. Um, we're going to gain enough life to get the buff, which is helpful. Uh, oh, I don't like any of these. Um, I think we take out Turgrid, though. I don't know. That's a that's a weird place to be. Um, okay. Now what is the question? I'm going to do this, uh, and we'll see why in a second. Um, there's a... Okay, they're not going to kill it. Oh, they are going to kill it. Okay, well then, we're going to kill the champion for sure. <laughs> So here's the trick. This dies, <clears throat> we get another Righteous Valkyrie back out, and we have another Skyclave in hand. So this just buffs up our squad a lot more. Um, so what this allows us to do is outpower the 7-7 here. We know that they've got one unknown card in their hand, but that's it. Um, so my hope here uh, is that we can push through some damage, but... That's, uh, I'm not sure. The death touch is the tricky part. That death touch is very, very good here. Um, now again, we do have another Skyclave. Uh, so what we're able to do is throw this out, semi-protect our stuff. It's not going to be perfect, obviously, but that just gives us a little bit more play. Um, there's the skeletal spawning or swarming or whatever it is. I hate this card. It's so annoying to play against. This card is so frustrating. Um, they just get so much value off of it. They didn't get any lands. That's helpful. Um, I guess they can activate this as a 1-1 one, one as well. All right. Uh, land's not ideal, not going to lie. But let's go ahead and throw this out there. What we really need is the, the angel that uh, we can get some damage in with. Throw out that. Um... We don't want to lose this, uh, or the Righteous Valkyries here, so... Do this, do this. See if they uh, decide to block in any significant way. They can kill the the Cleric of Life's Blood, which would be a good play, um, to be honest. But they are going to have to sacrifice something pretty useful to do it, so... Oh, duh. Why did I attack that way? Why? Why do I do the things I do? Uh, no, it's actually not the worst thing, because again, we still get stuff back here, so it's kind of okay. Uh, yep. What do we want? Uh, I guess we just get the Imprisoned Orator, honestly. We just kind of want as much life gain as we can get, I feel like. Maybe that's wrong, I don't know. The, the Hollowed Priest would certainly do a lot, but... <clears throat> All right, gaining more life, <laughs> gaining a lot more life. We're at 69, hey -o. Um. All right, cool. So they're going to blow up a Righteous Valkyrie. We get a priest in its place, uh, which is okay. I mean, it's not great, but it's okay. The trick is they do still have to kill us. Now, they have a 9-9, nine -nine, which is very good and could potentially do it, but like... It's going to take a number of turns for them to kill us. Um, the Spider Queen is a very difficult card to, to deal with here. <coughs> okay, sure. Okay. They sacked the Wren so they could get a second to 9-9. Nine nine. I think that's probably the right play, honestly. We need just something good here. Something good. Impassioned Orator, not great. It's a play, so I'm not going to be that upset about it. Um, but it's not great. Um, we're kind of hitting a standoff, though, here, to be honest. I mean, 
we're gonna start out powering them, I think. Thanks to the cleric as well as the hollowed priest. Uh, plus Righteous Valkyrie doing its work. I mean, I don't know. We're gaining a lot of life. <laughs> That's my only thing. This might go on. This might go on for a little while. Um, I believe in us, though. I'm, I'm going to stick it out. Maybe they'll see the writing on the wall and give up. Probably not. They have Turgrid as well, which is like a really frustrating card to deal with. Um... Granted, I guess we could just keep losing life and it's really not the end of the world. <laughs> they used a timeout. All right, maybe we did it. Maybe we did it. Maybe we we bullied them out. That's my hope. That's my hope. That's all I've ever wanted to be in life. No, that's not true. That's awful. Um, all right. Got a counter on the, the priest. Opponent's still taking a little while here. <laughs> um... The one thing I wish we still had was the clear it class out. Uh, not only would that gain us extra life, but it also then would be able to pull the Righteous Valkyrie back from the graveyard at this point. Like, we would have been able to, to pull it back multiple times here. They used another timeout. Are they just trying to run the clock down, or are they actually thinking, hey, maybe I lost? You know what I mean? Like, I could see it go either way. I don't know. We'll see. This is their third binding. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we could attack with a 9-9, both 9-9s, in fact, uh, but I don't think we do. I think we just wait. I think we just wait. We're just going to see what happens. Uh, they're going to get a land. That's fine. Uh, they've got a 10-10 now. That is scary. Definitely scary, but we can stand to lose some life. That's the trick. That's the trick. They, can, they could attack with everything right now, and it would be not enough to even get us into worry position, if that makes sense. So, like, I'm not terribly concerned about that. So these have to attack, by the way. Um, I believe that's correct. Yeah. The creature died this turn, so they're going to end up creating extra of these tokens, but again, we've got so much power on board. We also gain life from this as... Uh, we just block these. <laughs> um, now, the trick is you can start to emblem here. Yeah, okay. Get an emblem with whatever an opponent is dealt combat damage by one or more of your creatures. If that player lost less than eight life this turn. See, that's an interesting... I don't know exactly how that plays out. What is the op opponent doing here is my thing. They might be having connection issues. I'm a little concerned. Um, but I mean, we're just waiting. All right. So we're going to block here. Uh, and I think we just block here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this one has lifelink, so we do want to gain the life if possible, because it buffs up the other stuff. But other than that, I mean, there's no real reason to worry about it. This is a heck of a game, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's a pretty cool game. Um, there's another Cleric. I mean, we're just going to keep playing them out. We've got nothing else we can do at this point. We just keep playing stuff out. Uh, we do get a lot, of, a lot of stuff in here. All right, so here's my question. Is it worth it to attack at all? Uh, this does not have Death Touch. So this does have Death Touch. That's the big one. Um, so we can threaten lethal to make them block, um, or we can just try and kill the spider queen. Um, so if we do that, I don't love that. If we do this. I'm just going to do it. If they want to like double block to kill the 1414, that's fine. Or if they want to trade off the scavenger that's fine i don't really care but i don't know i don't know what's right here is the problem i have no idea what's right all right <laughs> so much damage um cool uh yeah we lose our 14 14 blocker but again we're at 95 life i i don't know 
We just need the angel, man. That's what we need. That angel would be able to get through for a good bit, uh, solely because it has double strike, so it would get around some of the death touch here. Whew, what a game. Okay, so they're not worried about ultimating here, which makes a lot of sense, because there's not really a need to worry about it. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Do these have death touch? Yeah. It's fine. We just get another Righteous Valkyrie back, so I don't really care. And yeah, we lose an Orator, but like, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> We're trading up, you know what I mean? So like, that's kind of fine. Um, we don't get anything for the Orator, that's the only downside here. Uh, but we're gonna pump up the team once again a good bit. <laughs> um, God, what a what a weird back and forth this game has been. Uh, this is a long game too. Very long game. And the opponent's slowing us down a little here. They're they're taking their time. We have over 100 life at this point. And we have a 21-21, so this alone can straight kill them. Basically, it's getting there. But the problem is they have a 1-1 one, one rat. What a frustrating concept. Uh, but it is what it is. We're going to push through. We're going to do the best we can. We're just going to have a fun time. If we lose, we lose. Uh, but the opponent's not really progressing in any major way. I mean... Yeah, they're getting some value here, and all that value is really good, but it's not doing that much. Um, <laughs> we play it out because if we do draw a cleric class, we just kind of want to be able to to throw out all that, uh, or level it up as many times as possible. I don't know what we do, guys. I have no idea. I mean, this is like kind of ridiculous. So we can't attack with these. These have reach, so... I'm just not going to do anything. I don't know. I have no idea. We're at such a stalemate. I feel like this is a battle of who's going to who's going to give up first. <laughs> they do we are beating them on the deck race. So they've got 32 cards in their deck. We've got 41. So in some regard we're able to uh to outpace them a little bit here. And they also just seem to be interested in drawing more cards, which is fine by me. We're halfway there. We can do it. <laughs> <clears throat> all right i don't know guys this is a weird game <laughs> i'm so confused uh yeah they're gonna draw more that's fine i'm actually not gonna block i'm just gonna let these hit if we kill him, this can ultimate next turn. I don't particularly want that to happen. Um, and we can outpower him for a while here, so I'm not really worried about that. All right, let's gain more life. A sweeper would just be amazing on either side right now. <laughs> like, I think it definitely would favor... Uh, it favors them long term because they've got the skeletal swarming, but uh, we have so much life that we're kind of just doing okay regardless. I really want them to accidentally use like a final timeout and just lose. This is ridiculous, guys. This is such a ridiculous game. We're at 35 minutes right now because of this stupid game. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I hate that the opponent is doing this. I know what they're doing. It's very frustrating. All right, just use the timeout and lose. Use it and lose. Use it and lose. Use it and lose. Okay, they used another timeout. They got one left. Just, just do it. Please just do it. Jeez, come on. All right. We're just going to gain a bunch of life. I feel like they might just not be paying attention, though. They're just like, guys, this game is stupid. <laughs> oh, come on. So close. So close. So close. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. They have none left. 
Come on. All right, here we are. <laughs> How we doing, guys? We uh we enjoying the video? <laughs> if you made it to this point, comment 117. Comment 117. That's how much life we have at the exact moment. I want to see how many people actually watch to this point in the video. Because I think this is hilarious. Come on. Alright. They keep using timeouts and I don't really know. I don't really know what the deal is there. <sighs> this is insane. This is so stupid. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I don't know what they could have in their deck to, to beat us. The problem is I don't know what we have in our deck to beat them. We've got the Angel, which is a win condition of sorts. But it does, I mean, it would work. All right, they're going to get more stuff. That's cool. Like, none of this matters because we have all of this. I mean, it matters, but it's not like it's... Uh, doing all that much all right so we probably should just kill some of these guys um they are gonna ultimate here there's like no way around it i think it's gonna happen eventually so block here block here block here like eventually these get too strong to deal with so we do kind of need to get rid of them uh those we don't have to get rid of Yep. Yep, that's fine. The other worry too is if they have another binding, all of those things get death touch, which they've played three, so I'm sure that they've got another one. Yes, that's fine. Give me something. Uh, that's something. That is something. Uh, we might be able to get the Skyclave here back at some point, uh, which would be ideal. I assume they can kill something. Yeah, okay. They keep, like, searching, like, hey, yeah, maybe I can kill something. That's fine. I mean, it's not good for us, but it's fine. We're not going to attack. We're the most do-nothing situ- We are in the most do-nothing situation we could possibly be in right now. Um... They did ultimate this, though, so whenever an opponent is dealt combat damage, stuff happens. That's cool. We just have to outlast, guys. That's all we gotta do. This has death touch, uh, which means probably don't wanna... Alright, we're gonna need to block some stuff here. Um... That is gonna die, I know. Whoops, not there. There, shot way over there, all right. This is gonna get way more counters on it, or uh, things now. All right, so they're gonna boast it. They get to search their deck for a card, put it on top, sure. So we're going to activate Cleric class most likely, get back the Skyclave at Hi Hierophant, uh, which is going to set up a little bit of protection for us. We lost this, but we get to replay it. Which is kind of the important piece here. Um, and that's triggering, so we lose some damage, or we lose some life here. Yes, that's fine. Okay, uh, let's do this. This is such a dumb game, guys. Um, <laughs> we're gonna get this. Where do we want the counters? Um, I'm gonna put all the counters I can here. Oh, uh, we actually should have played uh, the Lunark veteran first, probably, but that's fine. All right, let's set up for the, the Phantom as well. What this does is anytime anything leaves the battlefield now, we get more counters. 
What is this game, guys? Uh, we need to get this strong enough to beat these 15-15s, I suppose. This game is so dumb. Um, yeah, and we still can't attack. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so dumb. <laughs> this is not a game you expect to have when you set out for a recording. All right, they're going to kill one of our guys. Which means we get another guy. Um, what do we want? Is it the orator or is it the priest? I'm going to get the priest. Guys, I don't know what the right thing to do here is. <laughs> I have no clue. Uh, what this does mean is they get a turn where they're going to be able to attack with Death Touch on everything, uh, which is certainly scary enough. Um, but we do have quite a bit of life here, so I don't know if we're that worried about it. <laughs> I mean, we still have 166 life which I don't think they can deal to us. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but here we are. Yes, just do the thing. Truthfully, I think this ends with them decking themselves. Maybe that's wrong, I don't know. Although they do have these guys. Uh, Turgrid is a little tricky. That might change the math here because they actually get to steal stuff then. But they probably did this in the incorrect order. What they should have done is uh, played the Turgrid first. Oh, thank God. Holy crap. Oh my gosh, that was the long... Oh, and we ranked up. <sighs> that was such a long game. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about this. <laughs> All right, well, first and foremost, uh, the deck did not lose, uh, which is really important because I think it sets it apart, obviously, from a lot of other lists. Now, obviously, we only got three games in. We would have gotten more had that last one not lasted like 25 minutes or whatever it was. But oh, my gosh, what a long game. I do really like this deck. It's been good for a while, um, but I think with things like the the Lunark veteran and the addition of really solid removal, um, I just think this deck is a solid one. Like, absolutely play it. I think it's very, very good. Uh, a lot of the pieces are still older cards, so you might even have most of the cards anyway, but the recursion of this list makes it really, really good because it's, it's not... It's susceptible, obviously, to sweepers, removal, all the normal stuff, but... You have a lot of replayability in the Lunark Veteran, the Skyclave a Hero Fant, uh, Cleric Class. A lot of things are going to bring stuff back for you to the point where it's okay if you lose a lot of stuff. Now, uh, the Agadim's Awakening, a good solid addition to this deck in my opinion. I should have put that in here, but I did not. Uh, but regardless fantastic deck try it out have some fun with it tech it out if you would like don't forget to comment if you uh if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about but thank you guys so much i uh i hope you have a fantastic day we'll jump into some more gameplay very soon i'll see you guys now.